Hello, this is uh, Wallington Filming and today I'm going to uh, explain to you how to shape a brush ready for painting. Uh, when I say shape a brush, make it ready so you can cut in down the side of the orchard etc. Right then, so uh, the first thing you're going to need is a cup of tea. Right, and a new brush and one that's uh, been used for quite a while and is shaped ready for glossing i.e. cutting in down the side of the orchards, a pair of scissors and a piece of yellow sandpaper. Right, so, basically, uh, I've just bought this brush, it's a Dulux Trade 2 inch brush, which is uh, mainly what you, we use in the, in the painting trade for doing door frames etc and skirting boards. Uh, right, so this is basically it. Two inch brush. And as you can see with the bristles, they're frayed at the sides and uh, it makes it quite difficult for cutting in down the side of a door frame. What uh, you want to end up with is a brush sort of that shape, but a little bit longer. I mean, this has been this brush particularly has been well used uh, I'm actually using this at the minute for undercoating and glossing uh, door frames so you basically you want it ending up looking something like that but like I say not quite as short okay so I'm going to show you how to do that and like I say this is your new brush if I hold them up together, you can see there's a big difference. With a new brush, there's not a lot you can do with it until you've worn it down, and that can take quite a long while. And if you're in the uh, construction industry doing the painting, that can slow you down, which will cost you money. Right, so basically you want it looking a lot like that, like in that sort of shape, but a little bit longer. So what I'm going to do here is take the scissors and trim the sides. This particular brush cost me about uh, what was it, seven pounds. All I'm doing here is slowly trimming. You can see that just starting to to go there. Just take your time, slowly. Basically, you're just taking the edges. Sort of like taking it around and just sort of like getting that sort of shape. You can basically shape your brush near enough with scissors, just take them corners off the ends. It's quite a long process, so just bear with me. Right then, so basically, um, I have just cut this new brush down, uh, and if you can see there, I've trimmed the edges. Now this has took me a couple of minutes to do this, and uh, I know it doesn't look like the other one, but the other one's been quite well used now. And uh, if you bought a new brush and you want to use it for uh, cutting in, etc you need to cut the corners off uh, to that sort of shape and you don't want it as short as the one I've just previously shown you because you want to get some usage out of it the other one's been well used so the more you use it after it's been shaped it uh, wears down quite a lot right the next thing you'll need to be doing is 
get your gas coupler lit and basically just burn, slowly burn the edges. Let's try and get it so you can see this. Now this does stink a little bit so you might need to what you're doing is just taking the, the bristles off that are sticking out around the edges. You can just literally run it. Now you can just burn the edges. Now you might need to repeat this once or twice. So basically you burn that like that. Right, now what you've got to do is get your sandpaper and literally literally sanding off all the burnt area. Just making it a little bit smoother ready for painting. Now what you might find is as you start painting, you, you, when you finish this uh, procedure, give it a bit of a wash. Ideally you want to use it in emulsion first because what will happen is when you start undercoating, don't use it in gloss, whatever you do don't use it in gloss. Just use it in emulsion or undercoat first a couple of times because what will happen is where I've sanded it down on the edge the, the little particles that have been burnt will uh, end up on your woodwork so give it a good sand down and try and use it in emulsion first even if you just paint a garden fence with it or paint a cupboard or something like that just so when it comes to using your undercoat you won't get the little uh, bristles from the bits that have been burnt going into your paintwork which will start to give you a little bit of a problem so basically that's all you do I mean you can buy brushes like this but they charge you more for it and they'll never be shaped the way you want. You can actually cut it down even more if you want but like I say I need it's a fair length because it won't take me long to wear it down. And if you can if you could feel it it's still a bit especially around this top it's a little bit some parts of it a little bit hard. That's all you do. Get the same paint up. Do that. Right, so basically, it's about to see that. That's cut down, you can see how the edges are. nicely shaped like, like I say you know with a, a week so's use in like a new property undercoating and undercoating that'll shape down to the uh, one I previously shown you and that's all you gotta do cut the edges burn it off a little bit to get rid of the bristles that are sticking out the sides and um, there you go basically it. Now you could you could even cut in with undercoat downside of an old trip for that. I mean like I say ideally use it in let's see the jewel or something. Ideally use it in um, emulsion first in a cupboard or something. Or if you double undercoat in door frames you could use it for either acrylic roll undercoat on the door frame first. But that's what you ended up with. When it's first no, when it's new you, you can't use it for much, you can't cut in with it or anything so that's what you want to end up with and if you uh, 
if you want to use um, it for just DIY you might want to cut it down a little bit more shape like that for cutting in but like I say that one's been well used and is like not much good for undercoating now it's just really uh, just for glossing, cutting in door, door frames etc so uh, like I say thank you very much for watching my video this is uh, Warrington filming don't forget to uh, subscribe and you'll get notified of any more uh, trade secrets as I would say okay thank you